we have Dr. Jude Nazira Yambela on the line now. Hello, sir. Uh, hello. Good afternoon. Um, good afternoon. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well, and how are you doing? I'm blessed, thank you. So, resident in psychiatry, sorry, I actually wanted to ask, is this a Tetequashi Memorial? No, I'm with um, Accra Psychiatry Hospital. Accra Psychiatry Hospital. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So, it's a pleasure to have you here as we're actually looking at the International Overdose Awareness Day. Now, people have heard of drug overdose, drug overdose, but I'm sure some of them are wondering, what is drug overdose? Okay. Um, first of all, let me just... Um, give a little definition about what a drug is. Uh, I'll try to explain it as simply as I can. So a drug, though there are different definitions, I'll like to stick with this one. Um, a drug, they say, is um, any substance that when you take will uh, cause some alterations in your body parts or in the functioning of your body. So any substance apart from food. So um, yeah, that's in simple terms what a drug is. So uh, when you talk about drug overdose, um, in simple terms as well, it means taking too much of a drug. And this drug could be a prescribed drug. Uh, it could have been prescribed by a doctor. Uh, could have bought it over the counter, or you could have obtained it illegally. So uh, by virtue that you've taken too much of it, irrespective of how you got it, um, is described as being an overdose. Um, also, uh, but then that's not always the case. Um, there are times where you would have taken um, the recommended amount of the drug, but then it still comes out as an overdose. This is because some people are different. There are always people who are different. Those people have very sensitive bodies to the extent that you take uh, a recommended amount or it may even be a low dose, but then your body still tends to uh, it still tends to be too much in your body because of the mechanics in your body. So yes, um, that's in simple terms what um, drug overdose is. Wow. So yes, um, the severity of drug overdose uh, depends on several factors. Okay. So um, the type of drug you take is one of them. So different drugs have different potencies. Okay. And uh, uh, they affect the bodies differently. So you wouldn't expect the, uh, different drugs to, the body to react to different drugs the same way when you take an overdose of it. And also the amount you take, if someone takes one tablet, considering all conditions are the same, if someone takes one tablet and another takes five or ten tablets, definitely um, the level of overdose will be different. Uh, also, the makeup of the body, like I mentioned earlier on, people are made differently. Mm -hmm. They are born differently. Um, what, may, what you may take and to affect you negatively may not have that negative effect on me, and you may react to it differently than I do. So the composition of the body also um, counts a lot Please, when okay. it comes to drug overdose. Doc, yes. so can what what types what, what what are the types of overdose? Do we have different types of overdose? Um, not per se, but then overdose usually when you are talking of the types, we have um inter, uh, intentional overdose and unintentional overdose. Okay. So we've got intentional overdose. Usually, um, this is also categorized into two which are uh, taking the drug to harm yourself, which is self-harm, or to commit suicide. Okay. Uh, yes. And the second uh, category under the intentional overdose is um, when you rather try to poison someone with the drug or give someone an overdose of the drug. So that one too is uh, assaulting someone with the drug or homicidal intent. So the homicide that we do it with the intention of harming the person, I mean mm -hmm. killing the person. Yeah. So that's for the intentional type of drug overdose. And for the unintentional, just like the name um, states. Just, uh, yeah. Yes. So with that, 
you do it um, without the intent to harm yourself. So this could be from the usual everyday use where uh, someone takes it, his regular medications, uh, and maybe someone is in pain, takes the medication and says, oh, I'm still in pain. Uh, I need to get rid of this pain and ends up taking more of it. And this can lead to an overdose of the medication. Wow. So under these circumstances, it's considered unintentional. And um, some people may not necessarily know that taking that amount will cause an overdose when they do it. Okay, so now uh, I I want to find out. So who can actually overdose on drugs? Well, basically from what you're saying, I mean, we're looking at both the ordinary individual, both the normal individual and then the trained professionals themselves. Mm -hmm. Who can overdose on drugs? When it comes to drug overdose, um, anyone can be a potential victim from the ordinary person to the trained professionals. Uh, it's, it's no discriminator of the person. So it's common from children to um, the middle ages to the uh, elderly, but it's more common in the middle age and it's also more common among uh, the, I mean, more common among the middle age and in males as well, yeah. I, I so you, you you said anybody, both the trained professional. Now I want to find out what oh. could actually uh, make or lead a trained professional to actually overdose. Well, um, when it comes to a trained professional overdosing, it could either be the trained professional giving an overdose of the medication, or the trained professional taking an overdose of the medication himself or herself. So in giving. Um, a trained professional given an overdose of the medication. Uh, one of the most common areas is um, in pain, when treating for pain. So mm -hmm. when treating for pain, you tend to, they say pain is, an, is a subjective thing. Some people have very low pain thresholds and others, though some people have genuinely low pain th thresholds, others tend to take it. And it's, it can be quite difficult sometimes to distinguish the two. But the objective of the professional, the health professional is usually to alleviate the pain. So mm -hmm. you can give a dose and the patient complains, still complains of the pain. And what you want to do next is to increase the dosage in order to alleviate the pain. And this sometimes um, results in that. And one most common thing okay it's mm -hmm. about education patient education yeah because of the pressure in the health system usually you have so many patients waiting for you to attend to and you don't have the luxury of time to give quality education to your patients so at the end of the day um, you are not actually able to inform the patients of um, the necessary requirements for taking that medication, yeah. when to take it, how to take it. You may not be able to go in depth. So at the end of the day, when the patient doesn't get adequate education on how to take the medications, they can um, overdose on it. Wow. All right. So I, I want to find out. So for the intentional way, actually, you find, even for the unintentional, I mean, probably for medical reasons, like you've stated, to alleviate the pain of the patient or of the person, but for the intentional, what, what are some of the reasons that cause one to actually overdose? For the intentional, um, like I mentioned earlier on, is um, done to either harm yourself or to actually take your own life. Some people who want to harm themselves actually try to seek attention from that or try to make a point for others to uh, see what they are going through. So that is one of the common causes, uh, common reasons why people tend to harm themselves. Others actually are fed up of life, are fed up with their lives. And that is seen when people um, attempt to um, take their own lives through suicide. 
and this uh, with suicide uh, people commit suicides for various reasons it could be due to a mental illness one of the common mental illnesses mm -hmm. that is associated with suicide is depression which is usually the, the severe form is usually associated with suicidal thoughts mm -hmm. uh, which some patients end up acting on those thoughts and um, one other common reason why people intentionally try to harm themselves or cause uh, their untimely death is when they are in severe pain, certain medical conditions can result in excruciating pain such that they want to end their those, uh, their sorrows, want to mm -hmm. end the pain. And by that, they try to take an overdose of medications to um, stop or stop that cycle of pain that they encounter. Encounter, right. Yeah. Um, if we look at the continent, I mean, here in Africa, what what would be your assessment of the drug situation? Uh, before I get there, um, let me just add some other reasons why people sure. tend to overdose. Yeah. Sure. Uh, in children, you'll be wondering why children tend to overdose on medication, but it's also common, especially under five years of age. Children, when they grab anything, tend to put it into their mouth and then swallow it, yeah. uh, not knowing the consequences of their actions. So especially uh, medications that are sweet, mm -hmm. that taste nice, when they find it, they put it into your, to their mouth. And this is usually due to um, improper storage of those drugs. So you find that in places where drugs are not properly stored, kids tend to overdose on them and these kids are brought to the hospital. Yes. And uh, one other reason why people tend to take it is uh, because they don't follow the instructions given by uh, the prescribers. You tell the person take it uh, once a day and the person ends up taking it twice a day or three times a day. Take it morning and evening and the person decides to take it otherwise. So those are some of the common causes uh, when people decide not to follow the instructions of their prescribers. Also, when they combine certain medications, they tend to increase the potency of the medication. So sometimes when you are giving medications, your advice, don't take this in addition to that, especially alcohol. Mm. It's usually one of the things you are asked not to take. Yet some people go ahead to take it, and in combination with other drugs, can be very put can increase the potency of those drugs, which will result in overdose of those drugs. Yes, doc. I actually wanted to ask in a situation where somebody has been given a prescription, and mm -hmm. probably they're supposed to take the medic the drug over a period of seven days. So then mm -hmm. they take day one, they take day two, they skip day three, and then skip day four. So. For day five and day six, they decide that, okay, because I skipped day three and four, let me just pump in the ones I skipped into it. It's, so, it's yes, this, this also counts as overdose because they are recommended dosing per each medication. And if you go beyond this recommended dosing, then it can have some toxic effect on the body. And that counts as overdose. So then there's nothing like it's going to make up for the days that you missed. No, it doesn't It doesn't work that way. The drugs uh, work in a particular uh, manner. And that's how come you prescribe it based on how they work. They have their modes of action or their mechanism of action. And all drugs have different mechanisms of action. That's how come you take some once a day, you take others twice or thrice a day, even others four or more times in a day yeah. so uh, skipping and then piling everything up is, is a bad thing to do okay okay yes. so we're moving on to your assessment of the drug situation on the continent here in Africa um, the drug uh, situation in Africa you know um, worldwide Actually, drug overdose is, is, is becoming a problem, mm. especially when it comes to the opioids. And yes. 
you know, in the Western world, they are able to carry out a lot of studies on instance. Um, this is not the same in Africa. Uh, very little studies um, is conducted on these drug overdoses. I, was, I had very little time. I was informed a few hours ago, so I had very little time to actually um, make some research. But then, uh, with when it comes to statistics in Africa, I wasn't able to get any um, concrete statistics pertaining to Africa, though a few studies were done in um, South Africa and Nigeria, which indicate that the trends in drug overdose are on the rise and that they are projected to even increase to over 50% in the next um, 30 years. Wow. That's, that's serious. Yes. That's serious. So with, with such predictions and looking at such trends, what would you advise? What do you think can be done? by both individual stakeholders and, I mean, governments in all this? Yes, so um, just like you said, is this a multidisciplinary approach? Um, it doesn't fall on only the healthcare workers or the individual to do this because um, when it's left to just these two, um, at the end of the day, we'll never be able to achieve our purpose. So um, I think the regulatory bodies have to come into play here to uh, come out with um, concrete or stringent measures pertaining to these drugs, especially prescribed drugs. Um, recently, a few years ago, um, there was um, this Tramadol thing in the country, Tramol, yes, yes. where the youth were abusing it. Yes. yes. And certain measures were put in place to help reduce it. So that has sort of reduced it. Though previously those measures were in place, but they were reinforced. Actually, you shouldn't be able to purchase certain medications from pharmacies without a prescription. But this was very common. And that's how come it was on the rise. But now, They've been able to put in place some of these measures, and the though people are able to get these drugs from other sources, but um, they're able to put in place some of these measures to help reduce um, abuse of these drugs. Um, also, proper education, like I mentioned earlier, is very yes. important. Um, though this is a difficult tax. Sometimes too much pressure on the health care workers, other times language barrier. Because uh, explaining certain things in the local dialect sometimes is a problem. Yes. Or explaining it in simple terms for the lay person to understand can be very difficult. But then health workers should take the pain to educate their patients on the do's and don'ts of the medications that they prescribe to them. Um, also, uh, medications at home should be kept safe away from children so that they are unable to get access to them. Uh, elderly people should be monitored, especially those with these dementias, the memory loss, who are on several medications. Sometimes they tend to confuse the medications, which can eventually result in overdose of medications that are not actually supposed to take. So that's one of the common causes of overdose in the elderly. Mm -hmm. They tend to confuse the medications, especially if there are many, mm -hmm. and they take the wrong medications in the wrong amounts, which mm -hmm. can uh, eventually result in the overdose. Mm -hmm. And um, more importantly, public education um, is a good thing that this awareness, um, is it an awareness day or awareness week? It's an awareness day. Okay, has been put in place. Um, actually, I'm sure a lot of people are not aware of it. This is the first I'm actually hearing of it myself. And um, the awareness has to be intensified because um, drug overdose is becoming a social canker and people are losing their lives 
as a result of it, and not just losing their lives, they're also um, being disabled. Mm. It's resulting in a lot of dis, uh, disability, mm. and this is going to affect the um, work groups of people due to this disability lost years because of um, the drug overdose. Um, I would like to stress that uh, coming from a psychiatrist point of view that uh, people should not be ashamed of seeking help. There are people who need help pertaining to these things, yet because of stigma or discrimination, they are afraid to come out to ask for help. But then um, we are there for them. If they find themselves in such situations, they need help overcome some of these things. The hospitals are always open to them, especially the psychiatric hospitals. Always open to them to come over. Um, we'll give them the necessary assistance they want. I'm sure. I'm sure they they they're definitely going to put that into practice. Now, I'm not in the studio alone. I do have my colleagues, uh, Mami Abamwa Minta here, and then Hafiz Gun is also here with me. And I believe Hafiz has a question for you, Doc. Okay. Doc, thank you very much for joining us. Mm, yes, uh, Doc, quickly, uh, I'm, I'm more interested in the trained uh, professionals that uh, some way, for some reason... Uh, can, can, you, can you start a fresh, um, the line was breaking. Yes, uh, Doc, can you hear me now? Yes. I Good. Uh, I said I'm interested in the trained professionals, those that engage in this behavior. Now, as a psychiatrist, how do you get through to them? Because these are persons that are already armed with the necessary information to not engage in these behaviors. Now, if uh, for some reason they do these things, uh, these things intentionally, uh, what exactly do you tell them, or how, what what is the treatment like, basically? Because I mean, they are aware of their actions, as a matter of uh, speaking. Yes, for the intentional harm, um, there could be an underlying factor like. A mental illness. Okay. So when it comes to mental illnesses, like I mentioned earlier on, there are some that are uh, with when people have such illnesses, they are predisposed to suicidal thoughts. And okay. not all of them are able to inhibit those thoughts. Some actually follow through with those thoughts. Right. So usually the first thing is to identify the underlying cause of um, the, whether there's an illness or any underlying problem that resulted in uh, the person trying to harm him or herself. And then you take it from there. Uh, so if there's an illness involved and it's treatable, the illness is treated. And we have uh, different forms of psychotherapies that we give to those individuals. There are some who do actually require medications, but then require psychotherapy okay. uh, to get through some of these things. And what we usually um, ignore most of the time is social support. You know, um, human beings are social creatures, okay? Right. We, we are not islands on our own. Uh, anyone, like I mentioned earlier on, uh, can fall victim of these things. Okay, I've seen people, I know people who eventually got addicted to drugs and you're wondering how it happened. Right. Uh, it can happen to the very best of us. But then what happens when it occurs to someone? We tend to point fingers at them and this only worsens the case. But one of the um, therapeutic ingredients in these things is um, social support. These are actually the times that those individuals need support from their family and friends to get through it because getting through it alone is usually very difficult. Right, right. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. We want to say thank you so much, Doc, for making time for us here on the Africa Daily Show. We're really grateful. Do have a lovely day and we'll sure do all to stay in touch with you now that was the voice of dr jude ayambila 
I mean, he's a resident in psychiatry at the Cra- Accra Psychiatric Hospital, and he's spoken a lot when it comes to drug overdose. But I'm going to give my co-host a, a few minutes, looking at the time, so that they just bring their thoughts on it, finally. Hafiz. Yeah, um, interesting submission there. Uh, he's clarified a few things. Uh, uh, personally, I just want to circle back to the question I asked him, because it was one of the fact that uh, before coming onto the show, I saw a publication that uh, read uh, drug addiction among health personnel rising, and that's just in Ghana. And uh, he also mentioned the unintentional use. So I was trying to understand just uh, how people armed with, you know, very good information could actually engage in such uh, dangerous behavior. But uh, definitely, well, he's cleared up uh, that, I- that bit uh, for me. And uh, he's definitely mentioned, I mean, it's something that could affect just about anybody. I mean, it doesn't matter your profession. It's, it is no respect of professions, basically. So uh, you better watch out what you do because, I mean, in the end, look at the things uh, some of them have to go through. Uh, uh, it has people, right-thinking individuals, acting out of character. Uh, eventually, some engage in stealing just so they can keep up uh, whatever behavior it is that, uh, you know, they, they are trying to, uh, you know, you know, engage in. Uh, some some uh, go as far as, you know, endangering their patients even because uh, if you're a professional, in the cases that I read, some of them are basically prescribing drugs to patients that are uh, d- uh, drugs that they do not need. So they would cycle back and then go take it from them again, which is harmful anyway. So uh, these are things they are doing. And uh, Doc has certainly cleared up uh, those gray areas anyway. Thank you, Ms. Mott. Hi. Yeah, um, I would just like to add to um, when he spoke about if you realize you have a problem, you should speak up, you mm-hmm. should seek for help. Yeah. Because um, they say a problem shared is half solved. solved. Yeah. You realize you have a problem. I mean, sometimes it's hard talking to somebody about the things they're going through. But if this is something that will in the long run harm you, could possibly um, lead to a loss of life, then I think we should gather the courage to speak up about it. I mean, we find ourselves in a world where these days you don't know who to trust with the problems you're going through. Yep. But drug overdose is not it. Try to speak up. Talk to somebody you can trust. Somebody you think can help you. And I think professionals as well sometimes. You know, sometimes you have to talk to somebody you trust and then they will get you the help that you need. So if you have access to a professional, great. If you do not, try to find somebody in your circles that you can talk to if you realize you have a drug overdose problem or you realize you have a drug addiction problem and then get the help that you need because overdosing on drugs is not it. I mean, you overdose on the drugs, you get the feeling that you want to get. The feeling passes and you realize the problems are still there, staring at you in the face. So you keep doing it. <laughs> and you, yeah. and you notice how sometimes when you tell a friend or someone you trust, like in your case, you mentioned uh, that I have a headache, this, and they start prescribing drugs. Go oh, and take a para. Go and take this, go and take that. And it's very common here. Sometimes they even point you towards, uh, you know, certain concoctions and everything. Take. And before you know it, you're hooked. Then and maybe it wasn't the case, and uh, whatever the problem is, it subsides. And the next time you you have a similar feeling, you are headed that same direction. And before you know it, you are on the expressway to that. You know. Mm. Plus, I think that's why he said it could happen to anybody. So I think you just have to be conscious as much as you can about it. And I think in treating some of these cases, and this is to the professionals, psychiatrists, doctors, and all of that, in treating some of these cases, sometimes they should try to find the the cause behind why the person is doing what he's yeah. doing. Very because if, yeah. if, you, if you tell a person, if you overdose on these drugs, it will do this to you, you're not, f- you're not, you're not, you're not any. solving anything. Because for all you know, I'm taking these drugs because, because I'm else, trying yeah. to run away from something, something yes. or I'm looking for something or something else. So sometimes it's like when and, and then we should, like half has said, we should stop telling just because the person says I have a headache. Oh, buy this. I mean, we don't we have do to it. Symptoms. Yes, we, we do, do it. It's, it's like normal. somebody tells you my head has a yeah, like, have you taken a painkiller? Yeah. Sometimes. Also, I say you actually have it and you want to offer it to sometimes them. Sometimes the person needs rest. I mean, everything is or not lack solved of water. with medication. Yeah. I think it's a, some of these basic, basic things. Because my head hurts right now. I pop a pill and I'm fine. 
the next time it hurts, I pop one it's pill still, and yeah. it doesn't really. You increase I, the dose. Yeah, I, I don't really. It doesn't. The pain doesn't really go away. I increase the dose. Yeah. So sometimes yeah. it's not medication is not the answer to everything. everything. Sometimes that's true. it's just sleep that you need, yeah. or maybe you're overthinking, or, or maybe food. you're stressed about something. Yeah. No food. Yeah. That's that's important. That's yeah. very important. I think I have headache when I'm hungry or when I haven't drank water. And I do. I remember there was a time I went the whole day. I didn't take water. It was when I was going to bed and I gave water to my younger brother. Then I realized I hadn't drank water myself that whole day. And it was a bit odd, but it's not a healthy habit. We have to be conscious about some of these things. Thank you guys so much uh, for joining us. And thank you once again to uh, Dr. Ayambila. It was a great session. <laughs>